Hey everybody and welcome to the channel. Well, you're probably missing my usual intro. That's because I'm on the road right now, but no worries. I have a bunch of videos lined up for you guys and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, enjoy the video. Okay, everybody. Well, as you can see, we're in Maya 2020. I hope you guys are doing okay in these strange times. And uh, today we're going to do a short little video where I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips that might help you speed up your workflow, right? So one, uh, I'm going to talk about pivot points and two, I'm going to talk about, um, you know, uh, modifiers or the, um, the gizmo, um, as some people call it, right? So basically how to skill and move and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about pivot points first. Now, whenever I talk about the insert key in my tutorials, people usually say the what? Uh, so the insert key is sitting right here on your keyboard. It's abbreviated as INS, and that uh, key is important when you want to move your pivot. So I'll give you an example. We'll take a cube, and for those of you who don't know what a pivot is, if I hit E to rotate, this is rotating around a fixed point, right? And that point is exactly in the middle of the cube. So if I were to hit W, you would see that, right? Now, what if I don't want to rotate there, but what if I want to rotate somewhere else? I would have to move the pivot point. That's all idea. Now, you can move the pivot point in two ways. One is to hit the insert key, so the INS key. And as soon as I hit that, the symbol changes. And I can now move the pivot point outside. So if I now hit E to rotate, it will rotate outside of the cube, right? Okay, let's go back. Oh, not that far. There we go, yeah. So that's one way. So hold down the insert key and then hit it again once you're done. The other option is to hold down the D key, the D for Delta. And as soon as I hold down the D key, you'll see that I get that same symbol. But the problem is I need to hold that, right? So let's pull that up like so. When I release it, it's gone. I hit E to rotate and there you have it. Now you probably know this, but what's cool is let's say I want to uh, jump the pivot point to a certain point. So I'm gonna take another cube, we'll hit W, we'll move it over here, uh, something like that. Let's say I want to have a circle of cubes around the center of the grid. I would have to move my pivot point to the center of the grid, right? Okay. So in this case, I'm gonna hold down D and I'm gonna to start to move it. I'm gonna pull it towards the center. Now, you probably know that you can snap to grid, right? By holding down X. So if I hold down D to move the pivot point and then hold down X to snap, I can easily snap it to the center. So if I now wanted to copy this guy, Control D to duplicate, E to rotate, Hold down J to get increments of 15 degrees, like that, that's one. And then hit Shift D to go all the way around. Easy peasy, right? Okay, so let's get rid of all that. Now, that's really simple, but what if you want to do something similar, but let's get rid of that. Let's say um, within an object, right? Okay. So we know that the pivot point is in the center here, okay? Now let's go over here. Let's say I want to copy that cube, so Control D to duplicate, and then move it over here so it's perfectly aligned with that one, and then keep on going. So another one, another one, another one, right? Now, the best way to do that is to move the pivot point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on D to move the pivot point, but I'm gonna hold on V to snap to vertex. So hold on V, and then you just click on that vertex. Boom, right? Yeah. I can hit Control D to duplicate, W to move it, and hold down V as I do so, and it will snap. So I can hit Shift D, and it will be perfectly aligned. Okay. Now, that's all about pivot points. Now, one more thing I want to show you guys. You see that the handles on my modifiers are quite long, right? Now, I'm not sure if you are aware, but I'm gonna get rid of this. 
you can increase and decrease the length of your modifiers. If I hit the plus key, they'll become longer and hit the minus key and they'll become smaller. Now, sometimes that can be very helpful if you need to align an object with something that is further away. So let's say I'll take another cube, right? And I'll move it over here and it's over here somewhere like that, yeah? Uh, I got my grid lines, obviously, but let's say I want to see how this lines up, right? Now, with these arrows, by hitting the plus key, you can extend the arrow all the way over to the other object. That's one thing you can do, so plus and minus. But what's way cooler is the fact that the bigger the controls become, the more accurate they are. And I'll give you an example. So get rid of that. We'll take this cube. Uh, actually, we'll take a new one just to start from fresh. Take a new cube, yep. Yeah. And I'll hit minus to make it a bit smaller, like that. And then we're gonna hit Control D to duplicate it. And we're gonna rotate that a little bit, yeah? Okay, so I want this cube to be perfectly aligned with the other one. So I'm trying to get it accurate. And you can see that that's actually not the case because it's not lined up, right? So if I go a bit further, it jumps over. Now, if I wanted to be more accurate, what I would do is I would hit the plus key and make it nice and large. And as I do so, I can now be very accurate and perfectly align it, right? So these are just a couple of tips that I want to share with you guys. Um, hopefully they were helpful. Uh, let me know if you got any suggestions for new videos. And that said, thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.